Welcome to this special virtual presentation of the 2020 State Bar of Texas Annual Meeting. Today, we will acknowledge some outstanding individuals for their service to the State Bar of Texas and also witness the swearing in of the new presidents of the State Bar and the Texas Young Lawyers Association. I'm Trey Apfel, Executive Director of the State Bar of Texas, and I'm speaking to you today from my home in Austin. Of course, we would all rather be together in person to celebrate all of these milestones. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic made that impossible this year, but we are thankful that we can still come together virtually uh, to keep some of our annual meeting traditions alive. A lot of hard work has gone into producing this virtual annual meeting, and I want to thank our volunteers, including our state bar sections and speakers, and our staff for putting this all together. I also want to thank Randy Sorrells for his dedicated service to the State Bar as president this past year. I will now turn the program over to Randy in Houston. Thank you, Trey. Before I give a few remarks and introduce our new State Bar president, I want to acknowledge some award winners who would normally be honored during the general session luncheon. First is the President's Award. This award is given to a State Bar member determined by the President to have rendered outstanding service. This year, the President's Award is presented to Thomas S. Leatherberry from Dallas. Tom Leatherberry is the practice group leader of the firm-wide appellate practice at Vincent and Elkins. During his four decades of practice in state and federal appeals and trials, Tom has worked on commercial, tort, intellectual property, and healthcare cases, as well as class actions. Tom has a long record of volunteer service to the bar as a CLE speaker, and recently as pro bono and retained counsel in a number of legal matters for the state bar. Among many other honors, he has received a presidential citation from the State Bar of Texas for his commitment to helping its diversity and inclusion efforts. During the 2019-2020 bar year, Tom ably led a team of Vincent and Elkins lawyers that represented the State Bar of Texas in McDonald versus Sorrells, in which three lawyers sued the State Bar for challenging the requirement that they join the State Bar and pay mandatory dues in order to practice law. On May 29, 2020, Judge Lee Yackel of the United States District Court for the Western District of Texas granted the State Bar's motion for summary judgment. The case is headed to the Fifth Circuit for uh, appeal purposes and Tom and his team will continue to represent the State Bar. Thank you, Tom, for your generous service and for leading our legal efforts and skillfully representing the State Bar as we continue to faithfully carry out the Bar's statutory obligation to regulate the legal profession and improve the quality of legal services in our state. The next award or awards are certificates of merit. A certificate of merit is presented to a Texas lawyer or lawyers determined by the president to have made a great contribution to the legal profession and the State Bar of Texas. This year, a certificate of merit is awarded to the following individuals, Joshua S. Johnson, Morgan A. Kelly, Carly Milner, Patrick W. Mizell, Scott Rothenberg, and Bill Locke. Patrick Mizell, Joshua Johnson, and Morgan Kelly are a part of the team at Vincent and Elkins that helped prepare and defend the State Bar in the McDonald versus Sorrells case. And they continue to represent the bar along with Mr. Leatherberry. Carly Milner was also a part of the Vincent and Elkins team preparing the State Bar's defense and is now with the firm of Fogler, Brar, O'Neill, and Gray. Each of these lawyers served an important role in successfully defending the State Bar and we'll, we are grateful for their efforts. Next, a certificate of merit is awarded to Houston solo practitioner Scott Rothenberg. Scott played an active role in helping the State Bar respond to the COVID-19 crisis. Scott volunteered to help the Bar organize and produce timely CLE webcasts, focusing on how to practice law amid the unique challenges posed by the pandemic. This year, Scott has also been an active member of the State Bar Board's social media engagement team, which was formed to help the Bar better connect with its members online. Thank you, Scott, for your contributions. And finally, a certificate of merit is presented to Bill Locke, a real estate attorney at Graves, Darty, Perron, and Moody in Austin. He helped represent the State Bar pro bono in the potential purchase of real estate at 1415 Lavaca next to the Texas Law Center. Thank you, Bill, for your generous pro bono representation. Next, I want to briefly recognize the winners of the 2020 Pro Bono and Law Focused Education Awards. You can see their names on the screen now, 
or read the full text at texasbar.com slash annual meetings awards. These awards are typically presented on the Thursday of the annual meeting during the Bar Leaders Recognition Luncheon. We congratulate these winners and thank them for going above and beyond in achieving access to justice and civics education for our fellow Texans. The 2020 stars of the Texas Bar Awards, which honor exemplary service by local bar associations, will be presented in 2021. Next, I want to recognize the 2019 and 2020 class of the State Bar's Leadership Development Program, Leadership SBOT. The participants listed on the screen spent the year examining what is to be expected of bar leaders and, with the advice and guidance of current leaders, discover how to best engage in the public involvement to be effective in the profession and in the community. We thank them for their participation and can't wait to see what they will do next as the future leaders of our profession. One of our favorite traditions of the annual meeting is honoring that year's class of 50-year lawyers. Since we can't be together in person this year, we are postponing the formal celebration of the class of 1970 until hopefully next year's annual meeting. In the meantime, you will see the names of the 50-year lawyers on the screen at the conclusion of our program, or you can access the listing of the 50-year lawyer names and other award recipients in the attached material section below the video player of this webcast. In their own way, each of these lawyers played a role in building and strengthening this profession we are proud to call our own. Congratulations to these 50-year lawyers on this milestone accomplishment. As my term to the 2019 2020 State Bar President closes. To say this has been a year of extraordinary events would be an understatement. In the first part of the year, the State Bar Board and our State Bar professionals worked in person together with lawyers throughout the state to expand member benefits and enhance communications with members to better serve Texas lawyers. When I began the term, I envisioned a bar that worked with our Texas lawyers at every turn. We made efforts to communicate those changes to all 105,000 plus Texas lawyers, which also helped to accurately inform and educate those lawyers who thought our state bar was more of a foe and not a friend. I received lots of feedback from lots of lawyers to tell me our efforts were indeed working. Indeed, they still are. We should always be known as a state bar that is of the lawyers, by the lawyers, and for the lawyers of Texas. And I know our next president and our next president elect are equally committed to this same mission. Of course, since March of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected every part of our lives, and for some of us has created extreme hardship. I have ongoing concerns for our profession, including our lawyers, our families, and all of our work colleagues. We all still have many unanswered questions and uncertainties. And over the last month, our society has faced a number of additional issues involving race and equal treatment like we've not seen in decades. No doubt the dialogue on race relations will last for years to come, as it should. And our entire economy has slowed down. In-person meetings are few and far between, and the world is, has been forever changed. But regardless of what we have encountered and endured now, I am confident that our State Bar will continue its efforts to assist us in our lives and our practices in today's world. During these last few months, I am more proud than ever to be president of our Bar. From providing free CLE and working with the Texas Supreme Court to working with the Office of Court Administration and working with local bars and their initiatives, our state bar has risen to the challenge to address many of the needs and concerns all of us have had during these tumultuous times. Together, as a profession, we have and will continue to overcome the challenges we face. It would be impossible to thank all of those lawyers and non-lawyers who helped me during this last year. I certainly want to publicly thank my wife, Alex and our children, Houston, Garrett, Darby, Stephanie, and Ashley. And I want to thank my partners, Benny Augusto, Muhammad Aziz, and Brant Stogner. Thanking the staff and professionals at the State Bar would take too much time, but Trey Apfel, our executive director, I ask that you share my thanks with your leadership team and colleagues at the State Bar. I now chuckle to myself on my idea to give my parking space to the staff person with the best and most innovative idea of the month. It worked great for a number of months, but today, during this pandemic time, there are less than a handful of cars in our parking lot on a daily basis. But the efforts by our professionals have been no less than they were before. Thank each one of you for what you've done at the State Bar to help our profession. 
To our chair of our board of directors, Jerry Alexander, you are simply one of the best people and best lawyers I've come to know. Your outstanding reputation indeed preceded you, and when I came to, you, to know you better through our work on the board, I, your reputation with me grew even more while you led our board during these times. You've been a fantastic chair of the board. Thank you. To our liaisons and to our board of directors who I've been so lucky to serve with, I want to thank you for everything you've done for our profession. And I want to thank the Supreme Court of Texas and Justice Lehrman for working with the State Bar during these times. You've been responsive, you've been uh, innovative, uh, you've been leaders throughout our state and throughout our country in our justice system and ensuring that the rule of law prevails. And finally, to all of you who have contributed during this bar year, to the lawyers out there, please accept my personal heartfelt thanks for all of your efforts. You make the best profession in the world even better. One of those persons in particular who I served with, I saved for last, and that's Larry McDougall, someone who I considered a co-president this year. It's my privilege and honor to introduce our incoming president of the State Bar of Texas. Larry McDougall earned his JD from South Texas College of Law, Houston in 1990. He's board certified in criminal law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization and is the founder of the Namesake Law Office where he practices with his son. He has previously served as a police officer, a firefighter, and an assistant district attorney. He's truly been a public servant all of his life. Larry has served the State Bar in many capacities, including as a member of the Board of Directors from 2012 to 2015, as a member of the State Bar Continuing Legal Education Committee, as a chair of a district grievance committee, and as district nominating chair for the Texas Bar Foundation. Larry has also served on the Texas Criminal Defense Lawyers Association Ethics Committee, their ethics hotline, and the Strike Force. He teaches legal ethics to lawyers across the state and is a member of several professional associations. Among his many honors, Larry has received the President's Award from the Texas Criminal Defense Lawyers Association in 2009, the Texas Bar CLE Standing Ovation Award in 2014, and the Outstanding Third Year Director Award from the State Bar of Texas in 2015. As a public servant, and now as a servant to our profession, I know he will do great things for our bar. Congratulations, Larry. I've had the privilege of knowing Larry uh, McDougall for, I guess, for close to 10 years now. And uh, I have walked in his shoes. And when I was uh, introduced to the board of directors several years ago, I had Larry McDougall introduce me because at that time, Larry was on the board of directors. So Larry and I have a, a what I call, a, a, what I think is a special bond that goes back over uh, several years. And I'm very uh, proud of that uh, relationship. And I'm honored to be here to be a part of uh, this ceremony today where he is sworn in as president of the State Bar of Texas. Uh, I guess I don't have to tell you, this is a big deal. Uh, this is a really big deal. And I want to congratulate Larry and Karen and all of their family uh, who is here. It's wonderful uh, to get to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Uh, and to meet some of Larry's and Larry and Karen's friends and colleagues uh, and uh, I guess friends who are like family, so as I like to say. Uh, so uh, we, we want to make sure uh, that we do this right. Uh, we're in strange, uh, unchartered uh, waters, right, with the, the COVID uh, pandemic that's affecting all of our daily lives. So we get to gather here today at the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office, uh, courtesy of uh, uh, Sheriff Troy Nels and his wonderful staff and present this program. And uh, so we're looking forward to it. So with that, I would ask you all to stand as I call on Reverend Ken Bryant of Richmond to give us the invocation. Let's uh, go to God in prayer and ask God for his graciousness, his blessings, uh, his continuous favor for Larry, his family, as he embarks upon this new endeavor to be the State Bar President. Uh, let's go to God. Will you bow your heads with me, please? Our most gracious Father, God, we come again saying thank you for being so wonderful, so kind, so just and great to us. 
Father, we come now invoking you to be a part of this very auspicious, important, and grand program. Father, we want to thank you for being the God that you are, to look beyond many of our faults and seeing and supplying all of our needs. Father, we would be remiss if we not say a special prayer for those who are going through the trials, the anguish, and the setbacks with regards to the COVID-19. We ask that you continue to bless our nation, bless our scientists, bless our doctors, and bless those who are falling in harm's way to find their way out. Bless those who have family members who've gone, who are now yet suffering. And then the Father bless this particular program. Bless us as we now come together to say thank you for a man who now is deserving to be the man that you call to be the State Bar President of the State Bar of Texas. Father bless Larry as he now embarks to bring forth his initiatives, his committees, his direction. Let him bridge the gap for education for the young, the uneducated, the need to be educated. Help him to understand the importance of the importance of knowing the difference between justice and injustice. Oh, Father, bless him in a special way to bring forth the programs that you would be proud of. And then the Father bless his family, his wife, his children, his loved ones, and his friends. And then, Father, if you do that, we'll be careful to give you the name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. In your name we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. Thank you, Reverend Brian. Please continue standing. Uh, for the posting of the colors. Please post the colors. Now, if you'll join us in the Pledge of Allegiance as Jace Allen, Julie Allen, Larry McDougall III, and Gage McDougall uh, lead us. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Now I'd like to call on Shane Bloomy uh, from the Wharton County Junior College to sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Thank you, Mr. Bloomington. Right. Face or heart.
And now I'd like to call on Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nels to say a few words. Welcome to the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office. We've been in this building for about a year now and I couldn't be more proud. Uh, Fort Bend County and the way the county has been able to to deal with the enormous amount of growth in this county from 25 to 30,000 people each and every year and how things have changed uh, dating back to I don't know those of you may not know but Larry uh, worked here in the 70s as a deputy sheriff and and he was held in very high regard I mean he received uh, accolades uh, from organizations he was the 100 club officer of the year he was recognized by the Optimus Club, uh, the Fort Bend Masonic Lodge as an outstanding, again, officer of the year. And he's been recognized by many others, the uh, MAD for uh, DWI prosecutions and then, and then TMPA for, for defending uh, police officers across the, the great state of Texas. You know, Larry has helped me in my career. I've been down here for almost 30 years and, and really I've almost met Larry uh, very early on in my career. And I can tell you, Larry, that when I was, when I needed a question answered, I could all go, I could go to Larry uh, and, and he was always there. He would answer his phone. Now we all know that Larry doesn't do this on his own. We all know Karen's the one that's in charge, <laughs> right? She would be the one that would answer the phone, and then all of a sudden this, this, this junior was coming around. And I've kind of heard some ramblings around the courtroom, the courthouse said, junior is a little better attorney. Uh, <laughs> you owe me 10 bucks. <laughs> but no, uh, Larry, I, I, I am telling you, uh, I, and I am saying this to you, and I'm looking you in the eyes, and I'm telling you, I couldn't be more proud of you. The fact that we have a former law enforcement officer that now has been able to, to achieve this success, to be, to be uh, the, the president of the State Bar of Texas, I think this is a great day for Fort Bend County. This is a great day for law enforcement officers across the state to say that, one, that, that, that a former peace officer now has been able to achieve this position uh, for the State Bar of Texas. And, and I, I am here for you. I consider you a, a friend, a personal friend, a professional colleague, and, and uh, just congratulations, Larry. So well, well done. Thank you, Sheriff Nels. And a moment ago, I told you uh, this was a big deal. And, and just before we swear Larry in, it, it's, it's important enough that some uh, important people uh, have made the trip to Fort Bend County for this swearing in. Uh, I want you to know that our immediate past president, Mr. Joe Longley, uh, uh, is here today. And uh, I, I thank Joe for attending. And we also have our State Bar Board of Directors Chair elect, uh, Mr. Charlie Ginn. Charlie's in the back of the room. Charlie, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate. He, he came down from McKinney, uh, so uh, he made that trip. And then also uh, Mr. Andrew Tolchin, uh, a newly elected uh, director to the Board of Directors, uh, also made the trip and wanted to be here uh, for this occasion. So I appreciate all of their efforts and, and time. And now I'd like to call on uh, the Honorable Andrew Wright, Judge of County Criminal Court of Law Number 7 in Harris County, to swear uh, Larry McDougall in as the 2020-2021 President of the State Bar of Texas. All right, Larry, you ready? All right, raise your right hand for me. All right, you're going to repeat after me. I, I, Larry P. McDougall, I, Larry P. McDougall, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute, that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of president, the duties of the office of president of the state bar of Texas, the state bar of Texas, and will do the best, and will do the best of my ability, of my ability. Preserve, preserve, protect, protect, and defend the Constitution, and defend the Constitution, and the laws of the United States, and the laws of the United States, and the laws of this state, and the laws of this state. So help me God. So help me God.
Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Congratulations, Mr. President, and I will turn the podium over to President Larry McDougal. Thank you, President. Well, I first kind of want to thank everybody for coming. You know, my daughter Blair last night asked me if I wrote a speech, and I said, yes, I did. And she goes, why? You never follow it. <laughs> so, so and that's kind of, I guess, what I'm not going to do today is follow the speech I wrote. I'm just going to kind of freestyle a little bit. And it's kind of neat getting sworn in back here, because even though this building didn't exist, the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Department is where I got my start in public service. I was a patrol deputy here in the 70s and early 80s, and... I kind of worked my way at Wharton Junior College here and then went on to other departments as I worked my way through my education. I, I didn't grow up wealthy. I had to work my way through school and I did it serving as a police officer. And actually, I enjoyed serving as a police officer. And it was great knowing, meeting the people, seeing what happens to the people. And I believe as far as my profession as being a criminal defense lawyer, it's given me a lot of insight into what the people need and what people are going through. The, the patch years ago used to say duty, integrity, and uh, yeah, I'm going to look at the speech. Uh, it used to say duty, integrity, and honor until Robin Fraser changed it up for Sheriff Nellis. But I'm kind of going to go through that, and I think that duty, integrity, and honor goes a lot for our law profession. I mean, when you think about it, we all have a duty to defend our clients and represent our clients, no matter how unpopular their cause may be. And most all the lawyers I know, we do it with a vengeance. We work hard. Ken is not only a personal friend and my preacher, he's also a criminal defense lawyer that did the invocation. And we defend people on a regular basis, some people the public may not like, but yet we do it and give it everything we have. We have honor. I mean, really, what's more honorable than being a lawyer? You look at it, most, a large number of our leaders in society are lawyers. They have a law degree. They've practiced law. If you look at it, in our state legislature, 54 of our House of Representatives in the state are lawyers. 12 members of our Texas Senate are lawyers. We are leaders. And I can't think of anything more honorable than being a lawyer. And I hope all of you feel that way, too, that being a lawyer is a special privilege. I mean, even though we worked hard to get that license and went to school and took that miserable bar exam, it's still an honor to achieve that. And then comes integrity. Who is more, I mean, I know people make jokes about lawyers and they make fun of lawyers, but really, where is there more integrity than the legal system? Candor is basically our creed. We have to be honest with the courts. If we get caught lying to juries, we lose our cases. We have to be honest with our clients. Our integrity standards are high and as high as anybody. I mean, you have doctors that try to help people and save lives, firefighters, save lives and save property, engineers build and design things, but it's us, the lawyers. We're the ones that have the opportunity to change the world. We're the ones that stand up for the people, the people that other people won't stand up for. We stand up for ideas. We stand up for principles. One of the things that always gets me is when I hear people make this comment, and they always talk about, you know, Shakespeare said, kill all the lawyers. First thing we do is kill all the lawyers. And you've got to look at that in the context that Shakespeare wrote it. What Shakespeare was saying is, is if you want to have unrest, you want to have anarchy, if you want to destroy the society, the first thing you've got to do is kill the lawyers. Because it's the lawyers that stand up. It's the lawyers that will know when people's freedoms are being denied. They will know when tyranny is coming. We'll be the first ones to stand up and act. And that's us, the lawyers of Texas. And I'm proud to be a lawyer of Texas, and I'm proud to represent you. But you may be asking, OK, Larry, we elected you president. What do you have coming in mind? Well, let me tell you a little bit. The bar of Texas, we're what ensures the legal profession goes. To me, the big job we have is to protect the profession of lawyers. And in doing so, it's protecting the lawyers themselves. We need to be able to stand up for the lawyers. I want you to understand, too, that the state bar of Texas is financially independent from our state legislature. Your bar dues, CLE fees, and other fees, we don't collect a dime from the state legislature. We own our building that we're in. We elect our board of directors, such as Andrew over here and Charlie 
who just got elected, and Trey, who used to be a president, and Joe, past president. We get to elect all these people to represent us. We are self-governed to a point. Yes, the Supreme Court overlooks us, but I'll be honest with you, for the most part, unless we do something incredibly stupid, they don't get involved. Right? So we have an advantage that nobody else has as lawyers. And that goes back to what we do. So what else do we do? I believe we provide some of the best CLE training in the world. I know lawyers complain about the price of it, but you're not going to beat the quality of what we do at the State Bar anywhere. And just so you know also, right now on our website, we have, well after this airs, you're going to have seven hours of free CLE you can get right there by going to our website. We're providing that to you, the lawyers, for free. That's something you get. I mean, we have, we have TLAP. After heart attacks and cancer, suicide is the number one cause of death for lawyers. I mean, I know police officers talk about their high suicide rate, and it is a high suicide rate. But lawyers were right up there with them in the high suicide rate. We have Chris Ritter running the TLAP program. This year in our budget, we got a spot to add a new lawyer member to TLAP to increase it. We have two lawyer members. We can kick it up to three. What we're trying to do is reach out to the lawyers. Lawyer wellness has become huge with us. Whether it's suicide, whether it's depression, any other mental health issue, gambling addictions, overeating, whatever, you need to know your state bar is there for you. And we have services and resources there that are available for you anytime you need them so that you can get them. And if we do this to you, for you for free, this is what we provide back to our membership, things like this. During the pandemic, I want you to know that our services never stopped. Trey Apfel and his staff basically moved their operations to their homes. They work out of their houses now, and we haven't missed a beat. We've closed the bar building down, but yet everything's still functioning as it ever, never ha as it always has. Everybody's working from home. We're still doing the CLEs. While we can't do CLEs because of the pandemic live anymore, we can still do them remotely. I actually, in fact, did one yesterday for the advanced real estate course. We're still out there doing everything we've always done for the lawyers of Texas. Now, what are some of the other things that we have going? If you practice criminal law or are familiar with criminal law at all, you know that we have a problem, well, any law that goes to court, we have a problem right now with jury trials and court settings in Texas. And it's become a real problem. A lot of judges are warned to go back to the way it was before the pandemic. And that's just not possible in my view. And the OCA, Office of Court Administration, set up a little work group. Myself, I was part of that work group. And we've determined that in civil cases, the lawyers and parties can waive things that can't be waived in the civil case and criminal cases. So what we did for the criminal cases, we're asking our board of directors to approve a task force. And this task force is basically going to be designed to deal with the future of criminal proceedings in Texas. This task force is made up of five members from TDCAA, the Texas District and Counties Association, five members from TDCLA, the Texas Criminal Defense Lawyers Association, five members from the judicial section, along with Judge Burt Richardson from the Court of Appeals, Trey Abfell, myself, and David Slayton of the Court of Office Administration. And we're going to be making recommendations to the courts and to the Supreme Court for their upcoming orders. In fact, we have a deadline for our first report due July 31st. Because we too believe that it's not right to expose the lawyers, their clients, juries, court staff, all that to this pandemic. And so we're working hard with this to keep lawyers safe and keep lawyers from being exposed. Well, what else are we doing? Well, come September, we're going to be back in front of our board asking the board for another task force. And this task force is going to be on grievance reform. We're going to be asking that they study, look at the issues for grievance reform. We have about 8,000 grievances filed in the state of Texas a year against lawyers. But only about 400 of them are deemed to be actionable. And some of them are multiples against the same lawyer. We believe, I believe, and I believe most of you believe that these fictitious grievances being filed have become a problem. It's also become a cost issue for the state bar in having to prosecute them and the lawyers having to defend them. So what we want to do is look and study the burden of proof. Should it be clear convincing instead of preponderance of the evidence? 
We want to turn around and look harder at doing sworn grievances when somebody wants to file a grievance. You know, if you come to the Sheriff's Department and want to file a grievance on a deputy, you've got to swear to it. But if you want to file a grievance on a lawyer, you go online and hit click. It's that simple. So we want to study these things and we want to make recommendations. And we'll make those recommendations back to the board and we'll see where those things go. But I want to let you know we are going to take grievance reform serious and we're going to work on it. Another thing that we're going to take serious is this, the, the courthouse access badges. We're going to put a workforce together probably in August, I guess sometime in August, maybe end of July, that's going to start working on getting us courthouse access badges that are around the state. Ones that provide real-time background checks. Ones that give the courts more security. We've got to give the judges some kind of veto power for the lawyers that they don't believe shouldn't have the badges, but they have to have articulable reasons. We're going to be working on these things, trying to get those badges for the lawyers of Texas. Now, I want you to know, in addition to that, we're going to be dealing with more issues on the COVID thing. We're going to be trying to keep this bar afloat just like it is now. I want you to know that thanks to Joe Longley and his issues with the budget and transparency, and then followed up by Randy Sorrells, who even did more good things in saving money for the bar, and also working on lawyer benefits, we are in a sound financial position as your state bar of Texas. We are as strong as we've ever been. And with that, we have the opportunity now to do things to benefit the lawyers to make our lives easier. Because I have the firm belief that if we can take a little bit of stress off you, the lawyers, you can better represent your clients. That's what I'm hoping to achieve this year as your president. I want to thank you for electing me. God bless you. And other than looking at my notes a couple times, I did not follow my speech. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. President, and uh, we're looking forward to working with you. Uh, one thing about Larry, uh, you never have difficulty understanding what he's saying. You know what I mean? I mean, if he tells you something, you don't have to say, well, Larry, what do you mean? Uh, because he kind of tells it like it is. And I, I like that about him, and what that, uh, that's what makes our uh, working relationship uh, so good. And uh, so with that, I will uh, adjourn the meeting and, uh, again, Wish congratulations to Larry and Karen and the McDougal family. Uh, like I said before, uh, this is a big deal, and uh, I'm proud of all of you, and thank you for being here today. God bless. The Texas Young Lawyers Association is commonly known as the public service arm of the state bar. Led by talented and dedicated young leaders, TYLA does a tremendous amount of good work for our state. At this time, I will turn the program over to outgoing TYLA President Victor Flores of Plano. Well, guys, it was an amazing year this year, and thank you for giving us, my family, the opportunity to serve uh, TYLA as president this year. Uh, our family truly believes that we are better together, and this year, we challenge the TYLA Board of Directors to do the same, to be better together. And we were just amazed this year about, uh, of all the amazing things that all our, our directors, 40 directors from across the state of Texas, unified to do a common goal, which was to serve our, our bar and to serve the public in advancing the legal justice system. This year, our T. Wally Board of Directors created some amazing projects that are gonna have a lasting impact, including our attorney wellness website, which addresses attorney wellness from multiple perspectives, including nutrition, diet, mindfulness, all the way to suicide prevention resources. This is gonna have a lasting impact in, in the state of Texas and across the country. We also created the uh, immigration uh, law guide. We created the diversity retention guide. We conducted over seven uh, free CLE roadshows across the state of Texas. And through the help of the Texas Bar Foundation, we created Your Voice Now, which is a roundtable discussion with students, teachers, administrators, and lawyers explaining how to better support our, our students and expressing their free First Amendment rights in a school setting. Right now, we want to thank all the uh, TYLA directors who are so instrumental in, in accomplishing all these goals. And we want to announce several awards that we will be giving uh, various directors, TYLA directors this year, including the President's Award, the First Year Director's Award, a Director of the Year Award, the Keith Kruger Award, 
and a few new awards that we created, including the Kirk Watson Excellence in Leadership Award and the Trial and Appellate Advocacy Award, including several President's Awards of Merit. To all our TYL directors, thank you for allowing us to have such a great year. At this point, I'd like to especially announce the award recipients for this year's TYLA's Outstanding Young Lawyer Award, Outstanding Mentor Award, and Liberty Bell Award. This year's recipient of the Outstanding Young Lawyer Award is Jason Milam out of McLennan County. Jason Milam, congratulations on receiving this year's Outstanding Young Lawyer Award. This year's Outstanding Mentor Award goes to Judge Vic, also out of McLennan County. And Judge Vic, we congratulate you on receiving this amazing award and for mentoring so many young lawyers. And finally, our TYLA Liberty Bell, which is given to one non-attorney in the state of Texas every year for their commitment to advocating for the, for the advancement of the legal justice system in their communities. Ms. Vivian Tamez, a McAllen ISD teacher in Hidalgo County, congratulations on receiving this year's Liberty Bell Award. And finally, I would like to take the last few seconds to thank a few important people who made this year possible. First, Tracy, Brian, Michelle, our TYLA administrators. Thank you so much for making sure I always stayed organized. Thank you for encouraging me along the way. And most importantly, thank you for being some of my greatest friends. Also, I'd like to thank my boss and Plano City Attorney, Paige Mims, and the entire City Attorney team at the City of Plano for supporting me over the past two years and allowing me to serve in this way. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank my bride, Crystal Flores. You have given so much to our family. You have made so many sacrifices and never asked for anything in return or ever complained. I couldn't have done this without you. We did this together. We truly are better together. Thank you so much. And finally, we're at to our end point. And I just wanna say on behalf of my whole family, again, thank you for allowing me to serve TYLA and the State Bar in this way. And until we see each other again, I pray that God just give you peace and strength, that he would give you happiness and that we would see each other soon. And now I turn the floor over to Courtney Perez, our chair, as she leads us in the transitioning of chair and swearing in of our new president, Brittany Harrison. Brittany, I wish you the very best. The best of TYLA is yet to come, and we cannot wait to see the amazing things that TYLA does under your leadership. Thank you. Serving as chair of the Texas Young Lawyers Association has been one of the highlights of my professional career. Um, having been on this board for the last five years and serving as chair last year, I will certainly miss my TYLA days, but I know that TYLA is in great hands with Tim Williams taking the reins next year as chair. Tim, I wish you the best. I hope that you have uh, a smooth year. And um, if I can be of any support, please feel free to reach out. Um, and now I will happily pass you the gavel and the Roberts Rules of Order so that you can sign it and assume your official duties as chair. All right, Courtney, uh, first thing I want to do is uh, tell you congratulations on a great year. Nobody could have handled this year the way that you did. My only hope is that I can be half of the chair that you were and I'd be doing a pretty good job. Um, as Courtney mentioned, one of the things that the incoming chair does um, is they receive a copy of the Roberts Rules of Order. Um, and since 1983, uh, every incoming chair has signed the Roberts Rules of Order. Um, so I will do that now. All right, and I look forward to serving as TYLA's chair this year. Good afternoon. I'm Tom Gorenson of the law firm of Gorenson, Bain, Osley. I first met Brittany three and a half years ago. My first impression of her was impressive. She really is an impressive person. Now the State Bar isn't going to give us much time to talk about her credentials, 
I feel like if I would go through them all, I'd be like one of those comedians. And I'd start with, oh, I've got a short presentation. And then it would just unravel all the way down to the floor. <laughs> Brittany came into my office. She asked me, Tom, can you help me with one of my cases? I'm going to meet with a client. And it turned out the problems in that case, the property issues were very complex. They were very um, nuanced. There were a lot of emotional issues on top of emotional issues. And I said, God, she wants my wisdom. She wants the sage advice of Tom. So I studied up on the case. I worked with her a little bit, and we went into the meeting. And then Brittany handled the first issue. And she goes and she just discusses all of the pros, all of the cons, comes up with a strategy, comes up with tactics. It was ama really amazing. I was impressed at how well she did on the first issue. I had nothing to add to it. She goes to the second issue of the case with the client. Absolutely perfect, just as good as the first one. We get to the third issue, and oh my gosh, she nails it. It goes on for an hour and a half we had that meeting. And I don't think after I'd introduced myself, I'd said more than three words. And what in, afterwards, when I was thinking, when Brittany asked me to swear her in, wow, what a good lawyer she was. For certainly wise beyond her years. I thought she was also wise in the ways of the world. In other words, she had lots of good common sense. And I was really impressed. And as older lawyers we worry about, particularly in today's society, where are the leaders and where are they going to come from? And I realized then, and as I realize now, Brittany is one of those leaders. I went over the oath that I'm going to go through with her, and I realized, my goodness, that oath sounds awfully familiar. We've all heard oaths similar to this, to the highest positions in the land. And what um, would not surprise me any in the future, that this will not be the last time Brittany takes an oath for higher office. Brittany, are you ready? I am. Okay, raise your right hand. I, state your name. I, Brittany Harrison. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the duties of the Office of President. That I will faithfully execute the duties of the Office of President. Of the Texas Young Lawyers Association. Of the Texas Young Lawyers Association. And will, to the best of my ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, pre and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution and laws of the United States the Constitution and the laws of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. I present to you Brittany Harrison, the president of the Texas Young Lawyers Association. Thank you, Tom. Wow, I'm so excited to be here and honored to be sworn in as your TYLA president. I never envisioned being sworn in during a global pandemic and amongst all of this civil unrest, but alas, here we are. Despite all of this, I'm genuinely grateful to be leading the Young Lawyers of Texas. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention my support system that helped me get here. First, I'd like to thank my family, Jackie and Richard Harrison, Brandy Harrison Trotter, my little nephew, Brayden. Thank y'all for always having my back and always being my biggest cheerleaders. I love y'all to my work family at Gorenson Bain Ostley. I am truly blessed to work at this firm. You have all been so supportive and encouraging of my TYLA journey. You've been letting me work out of all three of our offices um, when I was traveling for SBOT business, and you've helped me become a better lawyer. And I've learned so much from working with each of you, and I am so grateful. To the young lawyers of Texas that voted and trusted me to serve as your president, thank you. You voted in an amazing board of directors and I can't wait to get started. To the heartbeat of TYLA, Tracy, our director, Bree, our project coordinator, and Michelle, our office manager. This organization could not function without the three of you ladies and we are so grateful and thankful to have all three of you. And last but not least, to my boyfriend Cliff, you've been my rock through this pandemic. 
You've helped me keep perspective to help me stop beating up on myself and being overly critical and just helped me enjoy the little things in life. For that, I thank you and I love you very much. During this uncertain and ever evolving time, I want us to remember the mission and the purpose of TYLA. TYLA is the public service arm of the State Bar of Texas. Our primary purposes are to facilitate the administration of justice for all, foster respect for the law, and advance the role of the legal profession in serving the public. We accomplish this each year through the work of the board in creating new projects and new initiatives, as well as all of the hard work of our local affiliates across the state. The manner in which we meet and conduct business this year is gonna be a little different, but our end goal remains the same, and that's serving the public. I have no doubt our board will work together, and whether it be in person or by Zoom or some other video uh, conferencing, we'll be able to bring all of our projects to fruition. I do wanna highlight a few of the projects that we have going on this year. Through the generous grant from the Texas Bar Foundation, TYLA plans to develop an educational program called Iconic Women in Legal History. The project will feature initiative, or excuse me, will feature interviews and stories about the iconic women in our history that paved the way for women's legal rights. We will also highlight influential women in recent history. Educators find that this story is often rushed or often left out of curriculum entirely. Our project will be able to give homage to these incredible women, including many that are often marginalized and excluded from mainstream textbooks. We're also going to have a leadership toolkit for smaller and rural communities. Larger local affiliates and cities have numerous leadership programs and resources. A lot of the rural or smaller communities do not have those same resources. TYLA will create a toolkit consisting of videos and other written materials that local affiliates can use to create a leadership class. Some of the topics will include having a diverse mind in leadership, how to create a local affinity group, implicit bias in leadership, Additionally, we're going to expand on our Vote America project and work to get voter registration and information more widely disseminated and available to the public. The goal is to reach younger voters, stress the importance of voting, and the benefits of being a voter. We will also disseminate information on how to become a poll worker. We hope to inspire people to become engaged in the election process and use their voice. Before I close, I want to introduce the executive committee of the Texas Young Lawyers Association. Our chair this year is Tim Williams, immediate past president, Victor Flores, president-elect, Janine Rispoli, chair-elect, Sarah Giddings, vice president, Michael Ritter, secretary, Lauren Sepulveda, and treasurer, Ashley Email. Now in the months leading up to this day, I've been trying to come up with some profound theme or some type of inspirational message and about basically describing what I want this bar year to be. My good friend Sally Pretorius sent me a post created by Leslie Dwight, and I think it's particularly fitting for this moment. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change. Declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. Young lawyers of Texas, each and every one of you has a voice, a strong voice and the ability to create change and make things better. I encourage you to listen to others, stand up and speak out for what is right, engage in respectful and insightful dialogue within your communities and your organizations, no matter how hard or uncomfortable those conversations may seem. We are all in a position to bring about change. Let's work together and become that change. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany, and congratulations. We look forward to your leadership with TYLA this year. This concludes our program for today. Thank you for joining us for this 2020 State Bar of Texas virtual annual meeting. We hope to see everyone in person at the annual meeting next year in Fort Worth. That is on June 17th through the 18th. In the meantime, stay safe and stay well.